Hello, everyone. Our uh, our session now uh, is about automation in online grocery uh, uh, by Mr. Raed Hafiz. Yes, Mr. Raed. Thank you, Linda. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. And thanks to Arab Tech Conference for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here and uh, share some of our experiences. My name is Raed Hafiz. I'm the CEO of El Grocer. And uh, for those of you guys who uh, don't know who uh, we are, El Grocer is an online grocery marketplace that's operating across all of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we're the only one that actually cover all seven Emirates. We connect both the uh, retailers with the shoppers and the brands, and we provide uh, full end-to-end -end service. So um, if you, you know, can imagine that grocery uh, should be a fairly simple uh, uh, process, but in reality, online grocery is an extremely complex business. Grocery in general is a complex business, but when you, once you start adding online mix to it and the customer acquisition, the uh, connection with various databases, the interaction between the retailers, the brands, acquisition platforms, making sure that catalogs are up to date all the time, making sure that you're crunching the data and analyzing the data all the time. There is a significant amount of uh, uh, data process, a significant amount of interactions across multi different uh, systems that is required. So in general, this is uh, fairly done, you know, straightforward through our technology platform. But once you start interacting with physical products and goods, you have to have people on the ground. You have to make sure that people are picking the orders. You have to be able to handle payments. And so there's always the human factor that comes into it. Now, if you, uh, for those of you who uh, forgot, there's obviously something called, uh, going around uh, with the pandemic. And a few months ago, the UAE went through a lockdown period where uh, with the pandemic, obviously, uh, we ha saw a significant uh, impact on all businesses and all industries. Um, the uh, physical uh, groceries uh, were impacted, uh, you know, no less than everybody else in certain areas. They saw a significant run up but during the lockdown period. There were other uh, alternatives that were needed as people were not allowed to go out and shop freely. So at the same time, online groceries business just uh, shot through the roof. We witnessed a 400% increase in volume over a span of less than a month. Actually, over a couple of weeks, uh, that volume shot up quite quickly and quite naturally because of everybody being at home and they needed to obviously shop for their own groceries. Um, we uh, were tagged as an essential service. We were allowed to continue operating and continue delivering to make sure that customers were not left without their goods and without their food items and necessities. Now, if you take a look at that, that didn't just happen in the UAE, that happened all around the world. And systems by nature were sized up to be able to handle a certain uh, size of volume. And uh, when this happened with such a shock, uh, even uh, businesses like Amazon Prime, like uh, Meyer in Europe, like Instacart, they simply tapped out. They could not have enough people. They couldn't have enough uh, uh, connections on the stores to be able to handle more orders. And so there was this infamous rush for this coveted slot, a grocery delivery slot, where people had to wake up very early in the morning to make sure they were able to reserve that slot. And they ran quite quick. They were pretty much out very quickly. In the UAE, we were lucky enough to be able to handle but still, we had to be able to book slots a week in advance to make sure people got their orders uh, in time for when, when they needed them. Now, you know, people, again, when they look at online grocery, they only see what's happening on the mobile and they think everything is digital. But in reality, in order for you to run a gr an online grocery business, you have to have a series of functions, a series of 
whether it's back office or in-store functions, they're required to make sure all the operations are done properly and seamlessly. And so when it comes to back office support, handling purchase orders, handling uh, you know invoices, supplier invoices, ensuring that payments are reconciled with all different uh, uh, you know invoices and payment terms that are coming in customer service saw a significant increase in demand because obviously people got nervous they placing orders you know a week in advance they wanted to know if that order is coming in or not there were people that were frustrated that their order was late by a couple of hours and so their customer service saw a significant spike in interactions and then at the same time in store operations people had to continue replenishing stock people had to continue making sure pricing were updated stock levels were up to date all of that required continuous interaction between our platform and the people that are interacting with them so things started becoming extremely difficult for us to be able to you know handle the technology platform scaled up beautifully we were able to take in all the orders we were receiving despite the sudden spike in orders the technology platform was handling it beautifully when it came to interacting with the physical world the real world if you will we saw a significant strain very quickly we had to increase our number of uh, you know uh, staff by about 300% and that's pretty difficult to do in a time when you know movement is limited mobility is limited but we got significant support from the government to be able to get the special permits to do so and we were working with a lot of uh, businesses impacted like hospitality to get additional people from them to work with us we also worked with a sister company uh, called Numite that started looking into what is it that we do to analyze and to be able to see what where automation can come in and help and to actually alleviate this load on people to make sure that we can able to handle the uh, the process and the sudden spike without having to continuously you know throw more people at it so we uh, through that analysis we've identified two key areas as i mentioned stock and product availability was a very important element and supermarkets which we tap you know we actually uh, work and, and bring on our platform were running out of products very quickly we needed to make sure that that product list was getting up to date all the time and i'll give you a bit more detail on that at the same time we had to work on making sure that payments were safe everything is going online and digital and there was a lot of you know uh repercussions and consequences for that to happen so i'll get into that in a bit more detail so let's start talking about the product catalog so when you look at the product catalog you know a typical store uh, has between 5000 to 15000 product items on our network and with the onslaught of demand there was a lot of uh, stockouts where the suppliers were not able to bring in items quickly enough or retailers were not able to replenish and where where usually a once a day update was enough that was no longer uh, uh, enough and sufficient for us at the same time we are our, our number of retailers shot up from about 100 to close to 200 retailers that that got onboarded onto our platform to make sure that they were able to deliver to their uh, shoppers. So we got a significant increase in the number of uh, orders. We got a significant increase in the number of product changes. And so our team had to continuously update the catalog, update availability, update pricing. That put a huge strain on our team. So we worked with, as I said, we worked with our sister company and we looked at all different opportunities. To how can we automate this? A clear option would have been to go and integrate with the retailers and with their point of sale systems and inventory systems. But that was an extremely costly approach as a startup cash is extreme as a, as of a extreme interest and, and, and concern at the same time it was also not the time to do any kind of integration with these retailers that were seeing a sudden influx on their business also so we needed something that was non-intrusive that allowed us to receive whatever they had available for us 
which were you know structured file formats. Everyone had their own formats, but they needed to make sure that they we got the data updated. So we worked, we focused on a technology called robotic process automation. It's a mix of scripting, uh, artificial intelligence, a bit of OCR, a bit of uh, uh, pattern analysis. And by working with our sister company, they were able to come up with a very quick solution that allowed us to handle the influx. They created pretty much a software robot that read the files as quickly as they came, was able to interpret all different formats and be able to identify what is the data that we were interested in and in the format that we needed to have it in and then update the platform. Within about two weeks, it was all up and running. We were able to start onboarding a new retailer with a new format in less than 10 minutes. Everything became automated and we no longer had to worry about continuously updating the catalog, whether on the availability or on the pricing. That helped our out of stock levels and our cancellations due to out of stock to drop quite significantly. It, it really helped us to at least save about 10 to 15% of our orders that were typically getting canceled because of out of stock issues. So that's, that's a huge win for us. And it really was a huge win for our customers also. It, it gave them a bit more of a, you know, peace of mind and making sure that their orders came in exactly how they've ordered them. Now, the second part that was mentioned is there was a lot of concern about how people used to order here in e-commerce, which is you know cash on delivery or credit card on delivery. People wanted to minimize the touch. And so we added online uh, or, uh, payments to allow people to just pay it using their credit cards. Now, as you can recognize, once you start doing online payments, there is another problem that gets created, which is the reconciliation needed between your own system, the retailer system, and the bank that's actually taking the money on from the credit card companies. That created another process that needed to be done. We had to interface with a number of different uh, point of sales and with a number with a couple of banks with regards to our uh, payment processing. That was a huge time consuming and it all the retails because of the sudden demand or the increase in demand they demanded a much faster or more frequent uh, uh, process of reconciliation we it was no longer okay for us to wait till the end of the month they needed every other day a reconciliation to happen because we're talking about very you know large amount of money that they that needed to be settled with them and accounting was just not able to keep up with that flood. So again, uh, Numite came across and they created for us a software robot that started connecting these three systems together, was able to identify the linkages between all the orders and the payments received and any shorts or any overpayments or any refunds that needed to be done. It did the reconciliation, created a summary report for us and then more, uh, moreover, it created an individual report for every one of our retailer partners and started communicating that report directly to the uh, uh, retailers. That, that way, our accounting team only needed to start focusing on the, the discrepancies that came back from the retailers rather than putting their time in creating those reports and communicating those reports. That saved us a significant amount of time. It allowed our retailers to be ecstatic with us. They were confident that if we processed an online payment, that they were getting it and they were getting it on time. We never missed a report. As soon as a new retailer was onboarded, the robot recognized it and asked for all the relevant information with regards to the contact, the terms, the frequencies of reporting and then went on and started updating the reports and communicating it. It significantly helped us and really uh, freed our accounting team to pay attention to what really matters. So, in, you know, in, I would say if we're looking at summary, you know, in, in, uh, for automation and, and the need for automation, there is room for automation in every place we look, in every industry we look. Obviously, necessity is the mother of all inventions, but it's important that we 
as you know companies as owners as leaders to make sure that we plan ahead create a roadmap create a plan for areas and processes that are ripe for automation it's automation is the uh, unfortunately has received a bad uh, name because it was painted as the reason for companies to let go of employees that's not true the the reason why you know you add automation is to let your you know your uh, valued employees to start focusing on what really matters eliminate the waste eliminate the time they put in on report generation and uh, data updating or data uploading and make them add their value and their know-how into what really matters customer satisfaction delivery of service making sure that your stakeholders are all serviced properly and on time and timely so don't wait for another pandemic don't wait for a pandemic to really kick off transformation digital transformation is a necessity and it's an ongoing process and you know i recommend to maintain a continued uh, roadmap for it um in continue investing in ai and automation and as simple as you know online grocery it there is a plenty of room for for automation and ai and it's crucial when you look at automation as you partner up with a company that really understands the process because it's you don't automate things by simply looking at what an employee does and just mimicking that you have to completely reimagine what is what was the original intent of the process and finding the best way to go and implement automation or digital transformation for it so i hope that i helped the conference in recovering some time uh, if there is room for any question i am more than happy to handle them but it's been my pleasure to be able to share with you guys uh, our experience and our know-how with with regards to uh, how to imply or how to implement automation in our business and uh, looking forward to a very successful uh, conference thank you mr raed uh, there is a one question from musa uh, he said um, uh, dear raed are you implementing blockchain in e e el grocer um, we are not currently implementing blockchain El Grosso. We're focusing on AI and uh, business intelligence, uh, data analytics. Those are the, the big areas for us. We don't get involved as much in the supply chain and uh, the need for uh, tracking origins. So we haven't ha seen the need yet for blockchain, but obviously looking forward to any suggestions of how it can add value to our company. Thank you. Thank you. There, Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Ra. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.